Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Today we're in the shop. It's December 23rd, um, day before Christmas Eve. It's, you know, like negative 35 degrees outside. So that's awesome, but it's nice and toasty in here. So we got some shop projects going on this morning. And uh, let me show you what we got going on. So we got a bunch of stuff crammed in here like sardines this morning. Here we got a big 780 where we uh, just sold this to a customer. Um, it's only got 330 hours on it. Um, did an inspection on it. Um, we got to swap the duals and the final drive extensions and put LSW floaters on this thing. And we got to swap the outer unload auger to make her go from 26 feet to 28 and a half. So, got quite a few things to do to this guy. Um, Josh has got a 4300 over here. He's doing all kinds of activities on. And then here we have a S770 that had a ripper shank ran all the way through the machine. So, we're getting ready to pull the rotor out of this combine. We already got the, the feeder house off and we set it outside here. Oof. it's chilly out here here's the feeder house she got a little snow on her last night but it took us about an hour to yank that thing off now we're getting ready to pull the feed accelerator out got a bunch of x9 sitting out here that we got to set up it's a beautiful frosty central illinois morning well here's the S770 here without a feeder house. You know, it's the feeder houseless option, Josh. <laughs> so we've got the rotor tools pulled out, which that was an adventure getting that out of the warehouse this morning with the wind blowing 50 mile an hour at negative 35 degrees in your face. But uh, we got her done and over with. So now we're gonna take the feed accelerator out. So we're work on getting off the, all the supports and all the stuff you could see right where the ripper shank went through, you know, where all the the bolts are broken. There, there, there. Oh, there's another one. So you'll be seeing more carnage as we go along. Now let's get this feed accelerator ripped out, Josh. What do you say? Sounds good, let's do it. Well, we got all the supports off and we breathed in about six tons of bean dust in the process. So, I wonder if we can see any damage in here. So, here's the front of the rotor. So here you got your front flighting, which acts as a big, like a big corkscrew. Well. I don't see anything yet up here, Josh. I guess it just, it just ate it. So let's just drink in all the damage that we found on this. And this is the reason why we're pulling the rotor. We got the new snap on light here. Boop. It's got lights on both sides. It's like a lightsaber. <laughs> well just about every single tine is broken oh pause right there see that we've got bolts broke off and the, the riv nuts the riv nuts are all screwed up oh that one's that one's gone yeah yeah it went through everything They're all broken. And of course it damaged the rotor hood. Uh, it's hard to 
see it. I don't know if I can get a good angle on it. There's a big gaping hole somewhere. Where's the hole? Oh, yeah, right up in, right up in here. Big hole poking through the hood. So um, that's another reason why we're pulling this rotor is to be able to get the the hood, the hoods out. This frame of is the cracked. yeah, this frame is cracked and bent all up. What do we got on the? Oh yeah, there's there's one gone. Oh yeah, that one's gone. That one's broke. So yeah. It's what a ripper shank does. Yeah, it's what a ripper shank does running through a combine. And you want to show you. All right, let's go look at the, the discharge beater. Oh, what do we got here? Oh yeah. This lower's bent. Oh the so that's the concave for the discharge beater. It's it's not really straight anymore. Wow. Yeah, it's, there's probably more damage as you go around with the discharge beater. And then it went through here and ate up Just all the, yeah. killed all the choppers. Killed all the chopper hammers. Gosh darn it, I hate when that happens. All right, now that we're able to fully drink in, you know, why you gotta watch your head on those things that's see that's why i have no hair on top of my head because i whacked it all off because of going doors <laughs> so now that we know why we're pulling the rotor let's get to yanking more stuff out well we found some more damage check out this feed ramp it's all busted great Now we're going to loosen the clamps on these hubs here because these got a scooch in. These aren't keyed to anything. They just kind of free float on there. The supports hold them into place. And of course we'll do the same on this side. Get that scooched in. Josh is currently putting the, the puller on the feed accelerator pulley. So we got to pull this pulley off here and then we can start working in on the, getting the bearings off. Sorry. Uh, no, goodbye. Well, I was trying to turn this. And I'm like, why is it getting stiff? <laughs> oh, somebody hang on. Uh, that Sasquatch is holding on to it. <laughs> why? Well, Josh got lucky and that thing just popped off like it was nothing. I think he was holding his tongue just right. To the left. To the left, okay. Duly noted. <laughs> Kinda. Are you still holding your tongue to the left? <laughs> oh, there, there you go. Oh, yeah. She's moving. Yeah. Using a gear wrench indexing pry bar. It's a must have for complex. Try to go as far in as you can with those. Need more lubricant? Sure. There's always time for lubrication. There's always time for lubrication. Need a bigger one? Maybe. Block of wood? Move your head, index it forward. Oh, well, sure. Well, gosh. <laughs> now we're going to be removing that bearing. Extremely long air hammer bit. Boop. 
Bingo. Deleted. One. Watch it. All right, yeah. Got it. She's free captain. All right. You want to drop outside? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we got the metal plate that protects the rotor bearing out of the way. I got the grease hose disconnected from the side. Now, Josh is taking the hydraulic lines and stuff off this plastic rotor hood and we'll get all the bolts out for it and yank that guy out. Yeah, she's going to flex hard. Maybe. Oh, oh. How about now? We win. Hey, there's that washer. All right, so now you can see the throat of the beast here. We're taking off all these little brackets on this side because this plate stays on there and we're gonna mount like this big scoop thing that's gonna go underneath. It's gonna pin to this top bracket and I'm actually over here building it right now as we speak. So this piece will go on the, the forks, putting it, I'm gonna bolt this extension on and then this scoop goes on the front of that and that's what attaches to the rotor in that front plate. Now we're gonna be putting this rig on the forklift and then we'll be putting it up in here. You gotta have the rotor clocked just like this. So that scoop's gonna go underneath and then there's two pins that's gonna go in the top here. Up, down. Up. Come in. Up. Come up a little bit. So we got the special tool in there. You can see we got those pins set in the hole and then there's little lock pins that go underneath that keep them from coming out. We got all the bolts removed on this plate on both sides. Just got one nut holding it in. So we'll take that nut out and we'll start to pull. Now this rotor is splined to the gear case on the back. So we're gonna have to get the just the right angle to be able to re release from those splines. Oh, I felt that. So it's happened to me. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you for doing the thing. One man. One breath. Here. Okay, go ahead and start it up. It's coming. You do. Tilt it up a little bit, that was it. Yeah, as soon as you tilt it up, it's pulled right off the bolts. Hey. Look, it's over. Nice. 
shift this way. Oh, God. You back up, turn from that way. A little bit. A little bit. So here we got a hydraulic line in the way, so we've got to get it off the steering valve and get it moved out of the way so the tool will clear the line. And as we were coming out that line, and there's some other um, rubber hydraulic hoses that were getting in the way as we were coming out, so we were constantly rebuild. fighting that. <laughs> just rebuilt line. Okay, back up slow. So here we have to constantly adjust the forklift. I'm telling him to um, go down and tilt back. As we're coming out with the rotor, that rotor is angled up towards the rear. So as it's coming out of the hole, I have to constantly tell him to go down and tilt back. And then I'm also you know, moving hydraulic lines and, and stuff that's in the way that's hitting. So it's kind of a a tedious process pulling this rotor out because you constantly have to go down as you come out. So we, me and Josh and Patrick, we work together all the time. So he is watching my hand signals only, and he knows what I want only by watching my hand signals. So he's just sitting there patiently waiting, watching my hand signals, and I'm just telling him exactly what to do. And here I'm using a pry bar to try to get um, some hydraulic hoses pried up over the rotor flighting that was catching as it was coming out.
and as you can see here, Patrick is giving him hand signals. So we go out, and then we gotta go down. And then we go out, and then we gotta go down. And this rotor weighs 870 pounds. So when we initially took those nuts out that was holding that rotor in place with that bracket, we had to compensate with the forklift for the flex that was happening as everything was, um, the weight was pushing down on the um, lifting tool in the bracket. So we had to compensate for all the weight that the rotor has. Well, there it is. That's how you pull a rotor out. Well, she's a nice one. Oh boy. That's nice. That's where it splines in the gear case. Man, talk about a beating. Flighting's bent. Yeah, she's got some owies. Hmm. Oh boy. That's real nice. Josh is up in the hull inspecting all the damage and basically every rotor hood is damaged. Both frame rails on the side, so these frame rails all the way across are bent. We got you know multiple separator grates, the, the concaves are broke. Um, of course that, that front floor we're gonna have to fix. This floor right here man smile Josh <laughs> oh look at this part this section just gone yeah this is this is gonna take some work to get all this out mm -hmm. all right well now we're working on the rotor hoods we got the uh, the front hood out but man, those bolts just absolutely suck to get to. As you can see, there's just no room up in here. Um, now we're trying to get the second one out, which is quite larger. Um, we had to remove the tailings auger and kind of the little housing that goes into the hood there. And now we're trying to get, we got the bolts out down the side. Now we're trying to get up to the, the top bolts, but there's just no room to get up there. So eventually we're gonna get all these hoods removed. We'll get you know the concaves removed. Um, I left them in there for now because it kind of gives you a nice place to lay um, whenever you go up in there. We'll remove all the separator grates. The discharge housing there at the back of the rotor has got to go. The discharge beater is going to have to be all fixed. We got a lot of stuff to do to this combine. Plus, once we get all this stuff done, we're going to turn the combine around and then we're going to pull the cleaning shoe out because there was a bunch of metal and stuff that went down through the grates and down through the screens. So we want to make sure there's 
no other metal down in there. And also we're gonna be replacing the swing arms as well on this machine. So three years later, no, I'm just kidding. It wasn't too bad. We got the, uh, the middle shroud or the cover, I should say out. And what we did in this particular situation is we jacked up the cab, took the rear cab bolts out and loosened the front. And then I jacked the cab up about three inches or so. And then it, it'll clear because the, the rotor covers hit right in here. So if you just jack the cab up a few inches, tilt it forward, they will come out. Um, you can go out the back if you take a bunch of engine seal shells out and stuff and start with the, the very back cover and start working your way forward, it, they will go out the back. Um, some guys go out the side. I guess they will go out the left side. I've never um, done that before, never tried it. Um, this one does have a five speed, so that would make things a lot more difficult. I don't know if you're going out the left side without pulling the five speed on this one. But in this particular situation, since we already got the rotor out, the the least resistance would be going out the front. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did, jacked up the cab. Now, we only got one big one in there left. So I guess we'll just get all the bolts out for it and slide it out the front. All right, well, I misspoke the last time. There's actually four pieces total. We still had that little one left and then this big one in the back and you know you just you know, gotta take the bolts out all over the sides and where they connect on the tops and then they just gotta slide out through here sorry I, did, I didn't film a lot of that because it was a lot of cussing and really hard to get to some of those bolts and everything so but we got them out and they will come out the front if you tilt the cab forward and you got the rotor out of course so now, that little bulkhead there is kind of boogered up, isn't it? Uh -huh. Oh boy. Of course, we got to get these frame rails out. Got to get this floor out, concaves. We got a lot of work to do. Here you can see the gash and the big gaping hole right there now this is all just bent she's real nice are we gonna be able to save her josh i think so i think so little, little body hammer work little body there body hammer action and i think we can bring her right back around all right you don't ever replace that piece that that's work right there <laughs> The hole is much bigger now. Oh, you got all the room. Yeah, I can see the engine from here. Sweet. All right, now that we got the rotor hoods out of the way and our mess all cleaned up, now we're going to work in on getting these side rails out. Well, that means everything's got to go. So we're going to go ahead and pull the concaves, pull what's left of the separator grates out, Got to pull that rear discharge housing and then start working on getting that uh, frame rail out of there. Now that we got all the the grates and the you know concaves deleted now we need to take care of this rotor discharge housing here so i'm going to strip you know all the grain loss monitor sensor wiring etc off josh is going to attack it from the other side and then we'll be pulling that giant piece off
Well, there's that piece. That was a glorious time, Josh. Yes, it was. So much fun. It's heavy getting that thing out the hole. It's a lot heavier than it looks to take. It took me a while because I had to strip a bunch of shields off around the discharge beater pulley so I could get to the two bolts on the side that was being held in. Yeah, so that's stripped out. So now what do we want to tackle? Start getting this left hand frame rail out? Sounds good. Okay. Well, we got all the bolts out to get this frame rail out. So we're going to pull this guy out. Oh boy. She's not the lightest. She's not light, Clark. Yeah, it's better. All right. So the right hand frame rail is out. Now we're going to work on this guy. And of course, you know, the five speed mounts there, 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 there. So hopefully the mounts on the other frame rail are strong enough to hold that up or we might have to support it. We'll have to wait and see what happens when we loosen those bolts up, see what it does. Okay, let's see if we can get this out. We'll see if it's stuck on the bottom. There's that. Yep. Well, um, yep. It was glued. Uh huh. Hey, Patty. Yeah, I'm coming. Okay, frame rails deleted. That five speed didn't even move a millimeter. I mean, it's solid. So it was being held on by some glue. So that's always fun to fight. Here we got the frame rails on the floor here. Got some new floor pieces in today. So that's cool. This is the right hand frame rail, but uh, these frame rails are just all bent up. Severe bendage. And cracked. And cracked. All right, well, we got the floor out. That was loads of fun. Absolutely loads of fun. Look at that piece. And these pieces are cast, too. Pretty heavy, stout pieces in there. And there you go. Pretty much everything is removed. So now we're basically, we're waiting on, we got some floor pieces in, but um, we're still waiting on a couple pieces to come in. I think these pieces right here. So we'll wait on those pieces to come in and then we'll start putting this thing back together. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this episode. I think we've done enough damage here for one episode. So you guys get to see, you know, how a rotor comes out of machine and the, you know, the tri-feed ramp floor thingy, whatever they want to call that. So. Um, we're going to be waiting on some parts to come in, um, probably going to be doing another video on installing all the components. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, keep that green iron moving.